Uh, so from the kitchen, we head into the wild for a hugely interesting discussion this morning. I certainly am excited. I think we can easily say that butterflies are the most beautifully decorated superstars of the insect kingdom. So today we are focusing on just that. And we've got Esther van Avestezen from Butterfly World and Ismat Adams, a researcher studying species here in South Africa, um, to hopefully open a window into these incredible creatures that undergo such an amazing metamorphosis. Now, we always like to kickstart our Into the Wild segments before we take your calls and questions with a bit of eco news going out there and this one really did pique my attention we know that we have a massive waste problem not only here in south africa but across the globe and it looks like a particular insect a moth and butterfly um, could be the answer i'm talking about the galleria melonella um, guys welcome to it um, we have discovered a new superstar in the insect kingdom um, we are talking about the wax moth as it is more commonly known can it actually digest Plastic, Esther, maybe I'll, I'll put that to you. Um, the uh, interesting thing about the wax moth, it has got an enzyme that assists in the digestion of wax, and that is why it's called the wax moth. It goes into um, uh, beehives, and it consumes the wax of beehives. So it's a big problem, and that is how it happened. The researcher took the, the caterpillars, threw it in a, a, a bag or a bunch of uh, plastic just to get rid of it, and the next day they saw, but look, some of the plastics consumed. So it's great news if you can do that. Uh, I know it's still in its infancy. I mean, this research data was only released you know, less than a month ago. But do you see this as, is the word on the wire that this could actually be an answer to waste um, issues? Hopefully, because plastic does not uh, break down. It's in the nature for hundreds of years. So if we can get this right and breed these and, and use it, then utilising it uh, resourcefully, maybe that could be the answer. It's Open awesome. a wax moth farm right now. <laughs> um, so, Ismat, um, welcome to you as well. Thank you so much for joining us, my friend. So you've brought your little delegation with you. You've got the pups here. So when we talk about a metamorphosis, I think as children, that's how we, we get kids, their imagination is mm. woken up with the metamorphosis of a caterpillar to a moth or a beautiful butterfly. What actually happens in that metamorphosis open a window to us lay people who don't know um, well what happens is that um, firstly in a butterfly's life cycle um, a female will choose where to kind of lay her eggs so what I've been doing is I've been doing research on the Cape Flats Barber's Ranger which is a skipper butterfly and it only occurs in false by nature reserve in patches of grass called cottonwool grass wow. and then what happens is that, what I found is that the females prefer to lay the eggs on younger grass and then what will happen is the um, larvae will hatch from those eggs and then they'll feed and grow and keep growing until they reach a certain size and they form a pupa which is like a hard casing and inside that pupa they'll, the whole body will basically dissolve and then get reassembled into an adult butterfly. And that's what metamorphosis is. That, that's unbelievable then, to yeah. me. And we're going we're to explore a little bit more about this, this incredible world with both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and of course, our number has changed, guys. If you'd like to pose any questions or any comments, maybe you've got some great stories of your own, 021-430-9881 is the number to dial. Thank you so much, Ewan, and welcome back to our Into the Wild segment. We're talking about beautiful butterflies today and what an incredible species they are. And we're taking your calls with our new number, of course, that number to dial 21 four three zero nine double eight one pose any questions to our amazing team here i cannot believe how much knowledge is on this couch as we speak and Esther, i have to ask you because i'm um, clearly you love your butterflies in fact you have created the first home to butterflies here in the cape how did your world of butterflies come about um yeah graham my mom saw this in canada 25 years ago and she came back and said we should do this and i thought this is a crazy idea but it is actually a lovely concept that you have you create a tropical garden and the butterflies fly in this tropical garden um, that's a very old photo but since <laughs> then we've uh, changed quite a lot um, when people saw that we were doing butterflies they were bringing us all kinds of insects and jars and spiders and say what are these so so the insects in general and spiders are very poorly known to the public so we created this um, um, insectarium in the end and then it became lizards and spiders and 
Oh, all kinds of things. That um, we could... I mean, looking at that picture tells a, a, an incredible story. Yeah. What a great way to ignite the imagination and a love yeah. of an ecosystem. Because yeah. we often forget that this is a system that needs mm. to stay in balance, and we are a big part of that. Yeah, correct. And um, I see the photo there of the children. We have tons of uh, school children coming through in the year, and we try to teach them in that short time the respect of nature, like nature, love it. If you, if you enjoy being there, you've got something to save. Um, I love that. I, I imagine a, a little itsy bitsy ismat in that crowd there, looking at this this, this incredible world. What yeah. before we get into your amazing study, and it really is amazing. What what drew you into this field specifically? Well, I kind of I started off in started when I was kind of working yes. as a field ranger, and then I think I kind of found my place in conservation. So I wanted to kind of find out how I could conserve these butterflies specifically because there was nothing at that time on, there was no information at that time on anything to do with the ecology that could help them. Um, and this survive. makes the research that you are doing now so, not just important but absolutely groundbreaking. Um, and I can't believe that we are dealing with a species that is so localised to our, literally, our back garden here in the Cape. So we're going to discuss a bit more about your incredible study. And again, we'd love to hear from you. If you've got any questions, please give us a call 21 It's my feel good Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in to a feel-good kickstart to the day. We are talking butterflies this morning with our incredible panel who have already opened my eyes to the wonderful world of butterflies. And we've got a caller on the line right now, Lynn, phoning us from KZN. A very good morning, Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. Um, what is your, your comment or your question for our panel this morning? Uh, I, I found a lot of grubs coming out of the ground. They, they actually, they had nested in cement and they were coming out of the ground. Now, I want to know, they look very suspiciously like these that, that, that the panel was showing. But I want to know, are they caterpillar, beetle or butterfly? The, the, you know, the, well, I know you don't quite know what they are, but they look <laughs> very similar to the ones on your show this morning. All right, so what could this be? I know we're not dealing with a huge oh. amount of facts. Thank you so much, Lynn. Great question. Um, coming from the ground, so that suggests yeah. to me that there's obviously a gestation or something going on under could the ground. Be, could be beetles, um, butterflies. The larvae of butterflies and moths are very much onto plants and onto leaves. So, um, and they will only bury into the ground uh, moths, uh, caterpillars, if they want to pupate. So if there's something coming out of the ground, maybe the ground is saturated with water, rain or something, and grubs come out, that could be beetle larvae. Beetle larvae, and obviously yeah. affected by the weather, and at least you're getting rain in KZN at yeah. the moment. Uh, so I think you know, I highlighted the fact that your, your case study is amazing to me because it's, it exists in such a localised area, and I think it's, it's vital that we have people like you, Ismat, doing these studies. Tell us a little bit more about um, what we know as the skipper butterfly or the Cape Flats barber ranger. Well, yeah, so I've been trying to find out what the habitat requirements are. And so what that means is I've been trying to find out what the resources are that are most important to the survival of the adults and caterpillars. So what I found is that they like habitat patches that cotton, those cotton wool grass patches, they like those, pa they like patches like that with lots of um, nectar plants. And the larvae are, yeah, they prefer younger grass with with lots of nutrients and leaf succulents. Now, we look at that area, it is so localised along the Strandfontein um, Road. Is, is that the only place that they are found? Yeah, they're only currently found there um, in those patches, in the patches in False Bay Nature Reserve. They went extinct from the, from the type locality, from the area where they were, where they were, first, loca where they were first found in Zanfle Nature Reserve, or near Zanfle Nature Reserve. And that's mostly been due to housing development, um, which just kind of destroyed the habitat. And then, um, yeah, so now they're only found in 
fast by nature itself in those patches of grass. So thank you so much for doing the study that you are um, to protect the species and I would imagine there are so many, a multitude of other species that are also in danger because of that so hopefully this research will help um, in all conservation efforts and, and inspire other young people to get out there and start focusing mm. on as we say our own back garden. We've got a beautiful while to explore yeah. um, and, it, and it really is full of colour. Guys thank you so much for joining Pleasure, us this morning. Esther. Um, more power to you. I love the fact that you have thank opened you. up this world for children to also go and engage and I know we're going to share all of the contact details on our website as well how people can come and explore the world of butterflies Fantastic. and inspire themselves. So thank you so much to Lynn and everyone else who's weighed in online um, exploring the beautiful world of butterflies.